Hi everyone, Boomer here. In this video, I'll be going over a technique used in Minecraft to help locate things such as fortresses, strongholds, weaponsmiths, also known as blacksmiths, mob spawners, mobs, and many other things. The technique is referred to as PyRay and refers to a method of scanning while using the pie chart built into Minecraft. I was first introduced to PyRay by watching a video published by Kemets, who does a great job of introducing the strategy and showing how it can be used to locate a stronghold. I'll leave a link in the description to that video, so be sure to check it out. In order to understand how to use PyRay, we first need to understand how to use the pie chart. Before I show you how to do that, I'd like to show you an easy method of adjusting render distance using keystrokes. Typically, render distance is adjusted by going into the options menu under the video settings. While that works fine in most cases, PyRay is easier when using keystrokes to accomplish the same thing. It's actually quite simple. To increase the current render distance, hold F3 and press F. Each time you do so, the render distance is increased by one chunk. To decrease the render distance, hold Shift and F3 and press F. This will decrease your current render distance by one chunk each time. To open the pie chart, we simply hold down Shift and press F3. This will bring up the standard F3 menu along with a pie chart in the bottom right hand corner. The font on the chart is quite small, so I'll zoom in to the bottom right corner of the screen to help you see it. What's displayed here is the root of the menu structure, but if you're not sure where you are in the menu navigations, you can press zero until you see root up at the top as shown here. We're going to be looking at entity data, so to get to that portion of the menu, you need to go to tick, which in my case is three, then level, which in my case is one, then entities, which in my case is also one. From here, you'll typically go to tick or block entities. For this example, I'll be going to block entities, which in my case is two. What you see here is a list of block entities within our current rendered area that can provide information about what's around us. Here we see there's at least one of the following entities in our currently rendered area a chest, mob spawner, campfire, beehive, blast furnace, bell, and smoker. Based on this, we can assume there's a village within our rendered area. We can determine how close something is by manipulating our render distance while viewing the pie chart. I'll start by holding down shift and F3, then pressing F until my render distance is two. Notice the list of items here didn't change when I did that. You can be fooled into thinking all these items are within your current rendered area, but that's not the case. To reset the pie chart after decreasing the render distance, simply hold down shift and toggle F3 off, then back on. Now we can start increasing our render distance until we see things show up on the pie chart. A couple things showed up there, most likely indicating a village is about eight chunks away. Something else I discovered while sorting this all out. I found that if I decrease my render distance by say one, two, or three chunks, and I know for sure that after having done so, a particular block is no longer in the currently rendered area, it will still show up in the list, even after toggling the pie chart off and on again. In my testing, I needed to back the render distance down by four or more, then toggle the pie chart off and on. You'll probably need to play around with this a bit to get the hang of it. Let's take a look at how we can use this to potentially locate a fortress in the nether. We can use PyRay to help determine if there's a spawner nearby, which could indicate a fortress. I'm going to turn on my chunks by pressing F3 and G. This will help with the process. Now I'll bring up the pie chart and navigate to the block entities section we discussed previously. Notice, we are seeing a spawner, but don't know how far or which direction it's in. Next, I'll decrease my render distance all the way down to two and then reset the pie chart. After doing that, I'll start increasing my render distance until the spawner shows up. As you can see, the spawner showed up at a render distance of eight, meaning the spawner is within eight chunks of our current location. However, at this point, we don't know which direction. So let's head over to the adjacent chunk and repeat the process. Depending on the results, we may be able to determine the direction of the spawner. 
As you can see, the spawner showed up at a render distance of 9, meaning we are now further away. Again, I decreased my render distance by 4 to reset the pie chart, which technically isn't necessary now that we know the direction of the spawner, which happens to be in the opposite direction of where we initially went. If the spawner distance didn't change, we could assume it's either to our left or right. At most, you should only have to perform the scan twice to determine direction. In this particular case, it's a blaze spawner, but what if it was a magma cube spawner in a treasure bastion? As I was doing some real world testing of this technique while attempting my version of a speed run, I came across this seed that threw a couple of curveballs at me. I successfully looted this bastion, then headed off to a safe place to scan for spawners. I was on a good pace for me, which means I left the bastion around the 20 minute mark. After going through the same process we used in my previous example, I determined there's a spawner in the direction I'm facing here. I scanned for bastions in the direction I determined the mob spawner to be located. However, as we'll see in a minute, I made a critical mistake. In fact, I repeated the pie ray a second time once I traveled to the outer row of chunks of the scan, more on that in a bit, but did not do an additional bastion scan. Of course, I was tricked. I was seeing a magma cube spawner in a treasure bastion. Let me show you what I did wrong so hopefully the same thing doesn't happen to you. For those of you not familiar with scanning for bastions, also referred to as E-Ray and several other terms, I made a video on the subject that details what it is and how to use it. If you enjoy this video, you might like that one as well. It can be found on my YouTube channel. In basic terms, I'm using the entity counter and M plus C to determine if a bastion is located in front of me. I can see a significant difference between E total and M plus C, but I also know there's a bastion just a couple of chunks behind me. The difference is enough to think there might be two bastions, so I need to scan around to be certain. In the past, I've noticed Crimson Forest biomes will skew total entities higher since the ongoing battles between hoglins and piglins produce item drops. In fact, in this case, the subtle spike I'm seeing is in the direction of the Crimson Forest. Now, just so you know, the render distance used to locate the spawner was 11. Since I started scanning immediately after locating the spawner, I left my render distance as is. As we'll see here, that was the mistake I made. The 11th chunk out included the spawner, but only included about two thirds of the bastion. Depending on where the piglins were when I scanned, they may or may not have shown up. Had I increased my render distance to 12, I would have captured the entire bastion and wouldn't have been fooled. In addition to scanning for spawners, which may indicate fortresses and strongholds, Pyray can be used to scan villages. Speedrunners, in particular, are interested in knowing if a village has a weaponsmith, also referred to as a blacksmith. If you scan a plains-type village and find it has a furnace, that means it has a weaponsmith. In a perfect world, you would be able to scan for grindstones, since that would guarantee a weaponsmith no matter the village type. However, since grindstones don't require updates based on ticks, they won't show up on the pie chart. You can be fooled in a couple different ways when using this technique to scan villages. Take a look at what we're seeing here. We're near a taiga village and do not see a furnace on the list. We do, however, see a blast furnace indicating there's an armorer in the village. While that may be helpful, we would really like to see a weaponsmith. Let's take a look around and see what the village has to offer. There's the armorer, and right next door is a weaponsmith. In this case, we might have missed out on seven obsidian, four iron, and an iron pick, which would be a nice way to start a run. Finally, you also need to be wary of snowy tundra villages like this. Although we see a furnace on the list, this village does not have a weaponsmith. The furnaces we're seeing are located in several of the standard houses. So I have two more things I'd like to leave you with. 
First, it helps to understand how pi ray scanning translates into potential chunk locations. I'll use this stained glass grid to illustrate the concept. In this example, the chunk I'm in is represented by the white block I'm standing on. Moving out from my position, the blue and purple stained glass would represent the rendered area when your render distance is set to 2. Green would be 3, yellow 4, orange 5, and the red slash gray would be 6. If our render distance is set to 6, we would be scanning this entire area. By starting our scans at a render distance of 2 and incrementing up, if we find what we are looking for when we get to a render distance of 6, we know it is located somewhere in the 6th ring. If we identify the direction, we know it can only be located in one row of chunks. Here I've identified the direction to be where I'm facing. So the only chunks where it might be located are the red chunks. If I traveled straight out in front of me and wound up in the red chunk I'm directly facing and don't find what I'm looking for, it should be located directly to my left or right. An additional scan should reveal where. The final thing I'd like to leave you with is some information on what else can be located using the pie chart. If we follow a similar menu structure and instead of selecting block entities on the entity submenu, we select tick, we will then be presented with a list of mobs and other entities that may be helpful. Here you can see that I'm in the nether and I can see both a blaze and wither skeleton listed. This tells me that a fortress is nearby. If we use this information in conjunction with block entity data, we may be able to develop some solid strategies. Additionally, we may be able to use this information to directionally locate other non-block entities as well. More testing needs to be done to determine the validity and usefulness of this data. However, it might be able to help your game in some way. Hopefully that helped you understand a bit more about the pie chart and how it might help your game. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts, so if you don't mind leaving me a comment, that would be great. Well, that's all folks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye!